What's up, everybody? Robbie will cut the world long hair here. And today is pad talk. I woke up screaming, cut the world. Yeah. All right, y'all. So today is a nice warm day, but um, pretty windy and um, and a pretty slow day for me today. So since it's the last day of the month, I figured let's go ahead and get some things uh, cleaned up. Let's do some maintenance work, get the trailer cleaned up, reorganize, and there's a few things I want to do in there as well. So um, right now I'm just about to do a basic um, tune up, I guess you could say. I'm gonna do an oil change, uh, oil filter, and an air filter change uh, on the Cub Cadet. So let's get started. Um, you know, it's crazy. When um, we got this last year, you know, we looked at the floor model and we was like, yeah, we like that, we're gonna get that one. And, you know, really not paying attention, you know, when they finally brought this one out to us from, from the back room, you know, we we were so excited, you know, we just loaded it up on a trailer and, and, and got home and, and, you know, started working. But to our amazement, um, they bamboozled us. Uh, we didn't get what we looked at on the floor. Uh, this one didn't come with a hour meter um, as well as the spindles that's on this one. This one comes with an S pattern uh, spindle. So with that being said, it makes things a little more difficult to, um, you know, maintain this thing and, and do what we really wanted to do. So for instance, um, not really knowing um, how many hours on it, you know, we just kind of gauge it off of, you know, how many yards we do. I normally just, you know, once a month, you know, do do an oil change and um, oil filter change. And, you know, if the air filter is good, you know, knock the dust off of it, put it back in and keep it rolling. Um, I would like to get an hour meter on it, but, you know, we're a whole season in and starting to even put one up there. It's kind of pointless, you know, because I really don't know how many hours is really on this um, zero turn so we just gonna keep it at that um, and as well as the spindles like I said uh, this one has s s pattern uh, spindles so when it's time to get blades sometimes it can be hard to get them in town um, so most of the time we have to order them um, or travel a little further now sometimes we can get lucky and if we find some in town you know we'll go ahead and grab a couple pairs just to have them uh but when it comes to like the mulch blades we have to order those because nobody in town sells mulch blades with an s pattern uh key on it so yeah we kind of got bamboo so i guess tip number one for today would be when you go and you're you're checking on or you you know you're looking at getting a uh, a new zero turn or a new lawnmower, whatever they're showcasing you, and you say yes, I want that one. When they bring you your lawnmower out from the back, you do another inspection and make sure that everything that you saw on the floor replicates what they're trying to give you. So that was a lesson learned. Um, that won't happen again. So, but. Nonetheless, she's running hard, and um, she hasn't given us any problems. No problems. You know, uh, we had we had a belt break on this. See, look at this. Look at this. It's not too good. Not too good. That's all right, though. Um. I should have did this when we first started up the season. It's all right. We're not worried about it. Not worried about it. This is why you take care of your stuff. 
because when you get behind, that's when things start happening. And um, it becomes an issue. Oh, real quick. So, like I said, this is the Cub Cadet ZT1. This has the, um, the Kawasaki FR691V, the 23 horsepower motor. Um, pick this up at um, Tractor Supply. It's an uh, air filter. I don't know if you can see that. 11013-7049. Um, this is the air filter for this particular motor. It's just as simple as sliding it back in, pushing that down, got this little clamp, twist it back down nice and tight. And there we go. Air filter done. Oil change. Let me see if I can bring this over to you. So, if you look right here, there's the hose, and you can see this right here. That's where I'm about to drain it at. Yeah, so, uh, 12 millimeter and a crescent wrench. And um, we can get it done. Take the cap off so it gets a, so it can breathe. So I wanted to kind of just hang out with you guys for the day, and uh, you know, just chat it up. You know, and just kind of talk about some things that's been on my mind with lawn care. You know. I've been reading a lot of comments, you know, not just on my channel, but, you know, on other people's channels. And a lot of people, you know, seem to have, um, I guess, a hard time trying to figure out how to really, you know, maximize their time and money with route density. Now, I can't really speak for your particular area because, um, you know, everybody's area is, um, it can be bigger, it can be smaller, you know, property sizes and whatnot. But what I will say is route density is just a matter of really you know honing in on the areas where you see you're getting most of your properties so for instance uh let's say my neighborhood where i live at um i can't really count off the top of my head how many properties i do have but let's just say for the sake of this video i have five properties throughout um my neighborhood where i live at well i know that this is um one uh a major key in route density first of all it's closer to home which is less time less gas and i already have five properties so what i want to do is now focus all of my energy on trying to get as many properties around this particular neighborhood now let's say three neighborhoods down the road i might have two yards in that in that you know neighborhood and then let's say I have just one random yard way off somewhere else. And then I have a couple over here, a few over here. So wherever, you, you take whatever areas that has the most properties that you're working at, and then you just zone in on that. Maintain the other ones, but focus all your energy and, and, and attention on those neighborhoods. So that way, you can build yourself a route that's so much easier to maintain, less time being spent, more money in your pocket. So I have a neighborhood that's maybe 
two miles away from me. And when I started over there, I had one property and it all I was doing was just cutting the front yard. That's all I was doing. Well, before you knew it, the next neighbor came over and said, hey, I want it done. Then the next neighbor, then the next neighbor. So before I knew it, I went from one customer to now I managed six properties in that one court. So I see that and I said, okay, well, there's six properties right there. Now my goal is to try to get everybody else in that court, you know? Um, but I also have in the same neighborhood, just around the corner from that court, I have two more properties. So all together, just alone in that, that subdivision, I have eight properties to maintain. I can knock all eight of those properties out in about four to five hours. Cause you gotta remember, I have six in the same court. So I can literally park my truck, trim everything, edge everything, cut everything, blow everything. I'm out of that hole within two, two and a half hours. Go around the corner, knock out the other two, and um, we call it a day. So, route density, it, it can be hard, but if you focus more on that than just constantly trying to spread yourself out, of course, you know, we're all out here, we're just trying to get those yards, you know, more yards, more money, right? But once you get yourself somewhat established, you know, 20 yards, 30 yards in, focus on just those areas and then start building yourself out because it makes no sense to run two yards here, drive 10 miles, do one yard, drive another five miles across town. You know, that, that's a lot of time wasted, a lot of gas, and you're not making no money. So focus on the areas where you have more properties within that neighborhood. That's all I can really say um, about uh, route density. And I'll shoot another video um, in the future and show you exactly how I break my route density down um, within where I live, I guess you could say. So that's something I want to talk about. Uh, let me check on this thing, see if it's done draining. Yeah, it's getting there. It's getting there. So, yeah, that was something that I seen. Uh, Another thing. Why do you why do you do lawn care? <laughs> you know, this is something I ask myself all the time. Why do you do lawn care? And the reason why I ask that is because if you're doing it for the wrong reason, you'll never get that what you want out of it. You'll never get it. Now, what did I do? See, I'm sitting here talking. I done tailed and dropped it in the daggone bucket. Anyway. Ooh. Yeah, we about to get a bad storm here in a little while, so. I'm trying to get this, trying to get this cleaned up and finished up. But yeah, like I said, what uh why do you do it i mean of course we all do it for the money but is that all you're doing it for because if that's all you're doing it for you're not gonna make it out here 
sorry to say you're just not gonna make it. You gotta have, there's gotta be something to it more than just money. Of course we all want money. But how are you gonna go about making that money? You know? If if you have, let's say, 20 other people out here doing lawn care in your same area, and all y'all go out to cut grass or to do lawn care, and y'all doing it the same, who's gonna make more? Who's gonna get more customers? What in the world is going on? I'm having a rough time with this thing. yourself stand out I do what I do because I love what I do you know yes I know I'm gonna get paid but I love the process I love looking at a yard and visualizing in my mind how I want it to look when I'm done So I take a lot of pride in making sure that every yard that I cut, I, I look at it, I look at it like this. Every yard that I cut, I always think to myself, if this was my yard, how would I want it to look? And then I make it happen. I don't look at it like, oh, I'm just gonna cut that grass, I'm gonna get my money, and I'm gonna go on. Cause a lot of guys out here that do that. They out here cut their yard, get get their money, and, and go on. Um, but if you're really trying to grow and, and really trying to make this thing something real, you have you have to have love for this stuff. If anybody says anything about lawn care is easy, run away. Don't talk to them. Don't even finish the conversation because lawn care is not easy. Cutting grass, that's easy. Um, but lawn care, it's, it's not an easy job. You know, you have to constantly practice, constantly study, research. You know, if your money ain't right to get better equipment, then hey, work with what you got. Learn how to work with what you have. And take pride in your work, man. Nothing drives me more insane than to sit here and see people out here destroying people's yard. But swear up and down, they, they, they handle it. But I look at them people, I'm like, okay, I tell you what, just because you came into my neck of the woods pulling that nasty stunt next to my neighbors that, that I cut, um, I'm about to show you something. So, you know, anytime I find somebody that's doing, you know, just some weak, 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 weak work. I make it a known fact to make sure I get a customer around them and let that customer know why you want my service versus their service. Now, you can take their service. You can see it right there. And I guarantee you they're probably going to be charging less. So, yeah, you can get a cheaper price, but if you want your yard to look like that, then hey, I'm not even mad at you. I'm gonna move on down the road. But once I get done with your yard, you're gonna look at your yard, and you're gonna look at that yard, and you're gonna be like, mm, nah, I like what you do. I'd rather pay the extra. I can see the difference. I see why I have to pay. So, once again, why do you do it? Why do you go out here and sweat it out, fighting snakes and spiders and being hit with rocks and debris and getting scratched up and sweating all day and, you know people 
not being happy with amazing work you've done. You know, all, all of these things that we deal with out here in lawn care. What makes you come out here and do it? Really think about that. Really think about that. Because once you have an understanding as to why you're out here, you'll then be able to um, start making changes that you need in your business to get it rolling in the right direction. Now, if y'all excuse me for a second, I gotta try to get this dag on. Oil filter off. There we go. Y'all leave in the comments too. Um, how often do you change your oil and oil filter and air filter and all that. I would like to know. Does anybody have the same issue as me? Does anybody else have lawnmowers that don't have hour meters? How do you gauge it? How do you gauge it? You know, we deal with a lot of stuff out here, y'all. A lot of stuff. And, um... I can't understand for the life of me. Sometimes, why we do it? Why do we do it? I mean, yeah, I just sat here and talked about pride and I love what I do, but hey, at the end of the day, sometimes I wake up, I'm like, man, this mess is for the birds. I am not in the mood for none of this. I'm not. As I'm putting on my, my boots, my pants, and my shirt, grabbing my breakfast, and heading out the door, cussing and fighting the whole time. Um, yeah, man, you gotta, you gotta love it, man. You gotta love it. Like I said, this stuff ain't easy. You know, and for us guys who, you know, have our business and we do our own maintenance, you know, we do, you know, these, these YouTube channels, you know, putting these videos together, you know, all of that alone. I mean, it's, it's a lot. I don't think people really understand. I mean, for those who actually have YouTube channels, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, it takes a lot of uh, effort and time to, um, you know, put these videos together takes a lot of time to put these videos together you know setting the cameras up and different angles and different shots and, and then you got to come home and you got to edit them you know after working a long day like I said why do you do it how do you do it I enjoy this stuff I enjoy it and I know a lot of y'all probably asking why are you doing that? Why are you changing oil and stuff and you don't have no gloves? Well, I've been a grease monkey most of my life. No pun intended. Um, I've worked on cars starting young and from there went into the Air Force and worked on airplanes. Driving big rigs, working on those. So, yeah, it's a little bit of grease. It ain't gonna hurt. It's not gonna hurt. I'm just um, cleaning up um, around this uh, oil filter here before I put the new one on. As you can see, it's really, it's really not hard. Not hard at all. So, yeah, I mean, you got
gotta love it. You gotta love it, man. And for, for those of you who are, who are new to, you know, lawn care or thinking about getting in or just started, you know, if this is something that you really feel like you belong, man, do it, man. Don't, don't let nobody stir you from, from doing this thing, man. Because even though it is hard, it, it's fun. It's fun, man. I think one, for me, what I love about lawn care is this is one thing that I can honestly say you get instant gratification from your work. You know? You pull up to a property, it needs some work, you put in the work, and then you get to sit back and look at, you know, the end result and get paid that's a beautiful thing that's a beautiful thing I think that's 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 a that's a very good reason and matter of fact I know that is a that's a hella good reason why um, why I love what I do um, it takes time you know don't let nobody rush you don't let don't let nobody rush you out here don't come on these channels and look at look at people that that's been out here doing it for years and years and years and man, I just can't get my yard to look like look like theirs. It'll come. It'll come. If you really have passion for this and you really love this this game, you'll figure it out because you'll take the time to teach yourself and really look at okay, what can I do different to make those edges look sharper? What can I do different to make that yard look a little more crisp? You know. Uh-oh. That wind picking up. Um, real quick, about to change subject. So here's the oil filter. It's a uh, 49065-7007. Um, you come out here, you take your time, you learn your stuff. And uh, you make it happen. You make it happen. Enjoy it. Enjoy the journey. Enjoy. Hey, how's it going? Um, sorry about that. Um, the wind took my camera down. Got everything messed up. So um. I'm kind of running on crunch time right now because the storm is about to kick off here in a few minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this thing up. Uh, filter done, the oil is in, um, air filter, all that good stuff. And I just wanted to show you real quick what I wanted to do um, with my trailer. Excuse the mess. Um, Kind of a busy week for me haven't had a chance to clean it out i normally try to keep it cleaned out at least once a week but um so as you can see you know the floor is a little dirty with some trash and stuff like that um but this right here excuse me y'all hold on my phone right again. um this right here so i've been having this issue because this thing see how it it, it sticks out um so i, I want to figure out a way to extend this out so that can actually sit there properly so i'm going to take care of that get the trailer cleaned up um get everything topped off with fluids and gas and go-go juice and um get this thing locked back up before this storm comes in and pulverizes me so but yeah once again you know pad talk episode one let me know in the comments what you think about this um is this something that you want to see me do more and more often um i will continue this uh i call this the pad just so by the way yeah that's why it's called pad talk <laughs> uh yeah you know it's just just talking you know it's not scripted you know nothing particular that i want to talk about unless you know there's something that i really really need to um talk about 
uh, wind blowing. Um, but yeah, so, you know, I just wanted to spend some time with my fellow brothers and sisters out here in the lawn care world. And, uh, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed the information. I hope you enjoyed the talk. Just hanging out with me for a little bit today. I'm going to get this thing wrapped up, and we will see you on the next video.